just looking at the numbers, when you go one for 15 on third downs, I mean, I don't even know how that's possible. I mean, that's a shockingly bad in, number. In the NFL, the way that they they kind of adhere to the offense and protect the quarterbacks and, you know, short passes. And I, I and then 18 total punts. I mean, both teams offensively, you know, just for the, for the game. 18 punts. When's the last time there were 18 punts in a game? This Throw is, in 10 penalties also for the commanders. Most of them on a, the offense. A gross, sloppy, ineffective performance. And... They were honestly lucky to score seven points. If Sterling Shepard doesn't muff that punt and set them up basically at the 20, I believe is where it was, they probably don't score. No, that was a 21-yard drive. 21, okay. I, I, the, they had 14 possessions. Yeah. Ten of them ended with punts. One was a touchdown, six plays, 21 yards. They had one interception, mm-hmm. one blocked field goal. That was a decent drive. And then one turnover on downs at the end. It's it, not good enough. You know. And we were saying this before the show. Ron Rivera is going to get the most blame. Deservedly so. Mm-hmm. This is year number four he's, for Coach Rivera. He's the mastermind. He's put all this together. This is his thing, mm-hmm. his baby. <clears throat> the offensive line deserves a ton of the blame. Yeah. They stink. Nick and, Gates was just getting destroyed. And Ron is also in charge of the offensive line. He he's in charge of picking the players that start for his offensive line. But Eric Bieniemy and Sam Howell deserve a lot of the blame too. Sure. And the Straight fans, around. for the most part, it's some sort of love affair with Eric Bieniemy because they want to fire Ron Rivera and elevate Bieniemy. When if you look at the offensive statistics, they're basically the well, same as well, last year. If you want to, if you want to whack Ron Rivera and then just toss the keys to Bieniemy for the rest of the season, I don't have a real problem with that. But People can't be clamoring for Bienemy to stay here the only, next season, are they? they the can't. only problem with that kicks is he hasn't really done anything to deserve even right. to give him the keys. Yeah, but I mean, I understand like you got to give it to somebody, but I mean, and I don't think Ron is going to get fired in season. I, I just think that I don't think he'll get fired this week. I think Josh Harris knows what he's going to do at the end of the season. Mm-hmm. But I think his gonna, fate is he's, officially. He's just going to be patient and wait for the season to play out. Well, it depends, Cakes. What if they get blown out this week, which very likely. What if they get blown out to Philly? Hmm. Which you can't I mean, just it's, keep. It's very possible. Sure, you can't just keep trotting. You got to do something. I've been saying that for weeks. But in but the I, you got to do something department. Doesn't Eric Bieniemy have to do something about these long developing plays that he continues to call for a quarterback that gives up a lot of sacks and an offensive line that gives up a lot of sacks? Well, surprising, he's not helping him out. Surprising, he looked better with Patrick Mahomes running the, the offense that he was a part of it's, than he does here in Washington. The thing that's so frustrating about them is they're not correcting the mistakes from the previous week. Right. They're not good enough. Maybe that's it. Yeah, They're not good but enough. But you would think that the coaching think, staff could put the team in a spot where they could correct some of the things. They, they kind of did a little bit in the second half, but it's just too late. And... The imbalance of the play calling, I, I just don't understand it. I mean, this giant team gave up a ton of yards on the ground coming into this. Yes, they but, were giving up 145 yards. But they couldn't take the advantage of it. Well, and I mean, remember, they had, as a team, five sacks. in six games, yeah. five sacks. Look, and talking. you had to know that Martindale was going to blitz you. Yeah. That's his calling no, card. No, let me ask this question. Does Eric Bieniemy only have one running play in his playbook? Because it seems like it's it's always... B Rob or Rodriguez, whoever it is, you're going to hand the ball off to right up the gut, and then they get two, two and a I half, truly maybe believe three yards. If like, he could, if he could pass every single play, he would. That's the way. I, <laughs> well, that's I think the way it looks they like. got themselves right. in a hole. I don't think they want to do that. Um, what hole? But, it wasn't like the Giants were up twenty-eight nothing. No, the, down a distance. They were getting themselves well, in down a distance holes. Sacks were they, killing them. You know, right. that's and why penalties. the reason why they were one in fifteen on third downs because there so many penalties, so many third and longs. Yeah, but um, I went back. I charted every possession. I gave up after the first round, uh, first half. Mm-hmm. But first possession, because I wanted to see how much of these sacks six, three and outs. are on mm-hmm. Sam Howell and how much is on the offensive line. And look, I think the offensive line deserves the most of the blame I yesterday. I think yesterday was mostly the but, line. All right, the very first possession, the first sack was on second and eight. You can say it's a hole, but second and eight is manageable. Howell actually has John Bates wide open, dead in front of him, dead in front of him. And he does kind of a double clutch, and then he gets sacked. Now, Nick Gates got blown up by Dexter Lawrence, Mm -hmm. but I remember hearing B. Mitch say this a couple weeks ago, and I started looking at it, that Hal has a tendency when he feels the pressure to look down. Mm. He looks at the ground, and he wants to bounce out for a run. 
when he might have a check down. Now, that didn't happen on all six, but that's the first possession. The second possession, third and six, Hal should have been picked. Mm -hmm. But lucky he didn't get picked off. Third possession was a third and four. Again, I think manageable. Another double clutch from Sam Howell. That was a Leonard Williams sack, the second sack. Third sack was the fourth possession. I don't think he had a shot. The blitz got him. Mm. I, don't think the second, I don't think the second one he had much of a shot. I mean, he double clutch because he was about to get sacked. Fifth possession, interception. Sixth possession, another three and out. Then on the seventh possession, he's sacked on third and ten. Okay, that's third and long. That's tough. He didn't have much of a chance there. And then the eighth possession... Another time where Nick Gates, who they signed in free agency, beat like a drum. got just beaten, and Thibodeau got to the quarterback. That was like a double sack. That was five sacks in the first half. I mean, it was atrocious. No, here's yeah. the thing. They it lost this game in the offseason. They lost this game in the offseason. When they signed Gates and Wiley and the way they handled the draft, the Manny Forbes thing, so far as a dud, I think Forbes will be okay, I'm sure, when it's all said and done, but... They, they, and then they brought in a coordinator who, people don't want to hear this, but he had no other offers. Mm-hmm. And if there's one thing I can say, I like the enemy's attention to detail that's reported. I like his intensity and all that. But if there's one thing I do know already, what are we, six games in? What are, what are we? Seven, seven, seven games in. Seven games in. I know yeah. this. He ain't special. Okay? He's definitely not a Stubbs. special coordinator. And, you know, the, the, he doesn't have a unique skill set that makes him, mm-hmm. like, an elite coordinator. Correct. That I don't see. Yep. I feel but like I he's think stubborn. They lost this game in the off season. He is a stubborn coordinator in my mind because he he refuses. It appears to change the game plan very much. No, he they wants do, to they throw they the do football. Some things. Here's what something a that little they, bit in the second half. No, but even in the first half because I was watching it too and I watched the first half twice. They they thought they would do enough by having. Uh, by chipping, having uh, they were doing shotguns and three step drops, and he was still getting sacked. Mm. And they were having running backs chip, yep. that sort of thing. Uh, tight ends in there. It, they didn't. What they needed to do was probably was move the pocket, sprint rollouts. And if you saw, I think in the second quarter they started bringing in extra offensive linemen. Mm-hmm. So they were making adjustments. It just wasn't enough. And it was too late. And they started to move foul around a little bit in the second half. Second half, they moved him. They yeah. probably need to do that every time yeah. from date from play one. I think when he just drops back in his five or seven stepper, he's he's dead well, right. Do that. It was it was shotgun three step and still couldn't get rid of it. Yep. And they were they were using running backs to chip. They were having tight ends help out. And then even in the second quarter, early in the second quarter, they had like they had extra offensive linemen up there too. But it still wasn't enough. They're not good enough. It's just, and it's not all the offense. The, the defense has a lot of blame to, uh, to pass around too. And you can look at, if you want to just look at the numbers and say, oh, they only allowed 14 points. This defense has a chunk play problem. They give up big, absolutely explosive plays. They did it to Hyatt. especially down the sidelines. They did it yeah. to Wandale Robinson in the in the middle of the field. They allowed uh, Tyrod Taylor to tuck it and run. I can't remember how many he picked up. I think it was a twenty yard gain. I think they on had a rush. seven twenty yard like, plays. That's they've got Correct. some splashy big name players, but they give up a lot of big plays. We're gonna have a John Kime and that was against well, and the backup quarterback. We're, we're gonna have John Kime on the show, and he pointed out New York in six games. Entered with just 14 plays of 20 yards or more. So about two a game. Mm -hmm. And as EB mentioned, they had seven yesterday. I I, I don't know how you guys felt about the very first touchdown um, when there was the penalty on the Giants. Mm -hmm. Tyrod. I didn't have a problem with them taking a penalty. Oh, I say decline that. I think decline that every time. I don't think the Giants are going to go for it on fourth and three. I, I think they kicked there, but I, think I just had a problem. For it. I don't know. Maybe they would. I don't know. I had a problem with it. Right but then off the to bat. allow for, on the third and fifteen to allow that touchdown, you well, know, up the scene to Waller. Jamin Davis covering him. I mean, that's just a mismatch. I mean, you just can't. Yeah, I mean, Jamin Davis just can't allow that. Yeah, he can't cover Saquon Barkley. He yeah. came off a good game. And was no, I'm talking about the Waller, Waller, the first oh, Waller. one. Waller. Okay, yeah. it was yeah. Waller. You know, it's just a mismatch. But we don't. have They've lost that four out of five. Cover him. Like. Ron Rivera, you got to get that tee time tracker out. Ron Rivera may be safe this week, but as EB mentions, if you get smashed by the Eagles, which is highly likely, well, I'd, I'd, say, I'd say it's probable. Yeah, well, it's very. They had the moral well, the, victory the last likely. time, and <laughs> we'll after that moral down. victory, we looked at the schedule, and some people were optimistic and said, "Well, they've got the Bears, mm-hmm. they've got the Falcons, the Giants, they've got the Giants. Yeah, they could win three in a row. Mm-hmm. They lost two of three there." 
after a 2-0 and start, they have now lost four out of five games. You lose the Eagles, that's five out of six. I'm sorry. He has to be in danger. Might be time to head to the lifeboats, boys. But And again, <laughs> absolutely, the, the clamoring for Biennemi at this point rings pretty hollow. Mm-hmm. I mean, you could give it to him. <laughs> sure. Just to humor people. But he has Nothing's not. Nothing's going to change. He has not distinguished himself. I don't, I agree. Only, Nothing's going to change. The only, in my opinion, the only thing saving Ron's neck from not being fired already is the fact that Josh Harris doesn't want to be looked at as a, an impetuous, mm-hmm. Im, impulsive owner like Dan Snyder, who mm-hmm. he replaced here in DC. So well, he's just going to let it play maybe, out. Maybe Josh I don't will see. fire him. Magic will. Maybe ma- magic. <laughs> magic doesn't hold back. Hey, he, fellas, just, he just gives it to you in both barrels. I look on at this, the rest of the schedule. I don't see a game where I say, "Oh, they're going to win that game." You can't yeah. anymore. No, nope. can't I, with them. That's I can, I can to see. Do. I can see scenarios where they lose all of those oh, games. Right. Yeah. It could easily because, spiral because obviously the Patriots before this past week, you say, "All right, well, the Patriots just can't score." But mm-hmm. I mean, they just beat Buffalo at home. That's not going to be an easy game. Nope. I would pick there them. Are Patriots no easy games on their schedule. I know. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So I look at them and go. I don't see a spot where they can put together a little string. No. You know, um, you know and it started it, it, it started with 3 weeks ago when they played the Bears and we thought that's a must win they're going to win that game. It was what was the the predictability on that one? Pretty high. And they've lost two of the three of those games. I don't see a spot. The rest of the schedule I go, "All right, that's a good spot that can win that." If not they, even not even the Giant game even, here. Even even if they went 5 and 5, which none of us will predict at this point. That's the a losing season. season. Yeah, oh, what I'm yeah. saying is even if you gave them, if you gave them right mm-hmm. now, because Ron said, I, I can't remember who asked him the question in the press conference, but he's like, we still have mm-hmm. 10 games left, <laughs> right. Right? which is true. Because if you're you know, a normal team, you might be able to say, okay, we could, we could win 7 out of 10 and get ourselves in position. But with this team, from what you've seen, with this offensive line, with this quarterback, with this no way. offensive coordinator, I'm just going to gift you 5-5. Five and five? That's still a losing season. That's not good enough. Yeah, it's over. And that yeah. would be a gift because I mean, they ain't getting to five and Ron five. Knows his, he knows his fate is sealed here. He's well aware. And then Unless with the enemy, he's kind of coaching like it. With the enemy, his offense right now is ranked 22nd in yardage and 20th in points. Last year under Scott Turner, they were 20th in yardage and 24th in points. They're averaging one point per game more right. this year than last year. They're averaging less yards than last year. It is the same old skins. Pretty much. Yeah, we, we said sucks. that the enemy needs to get them in the 23 to 25 points per game range. And that hasn't happened. And, and I, I just tallied going forward. I just tallied the sacks. Carson Wentz was sacked 26 times last year. Taylor Heineke was sacked 19 times. That's 45 sacks. In seven games, they have a quarterback who's been sacked 40 times. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's unfathomable. I'm shocked he hasn't been concussed. Or 40 times. I keep saying that every yeah. week. I, I don't know how he's surviving. You know what? In due time, it, yeah, it's going to happen. Coming. Yeah. And it's coming. And that was against eventually. a hapless New York Giants defensive line that had five sacks oh, going in. Nobody's hapless when they face the commander's O-line. You you turn into like the uh, the steel curtain from uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers from back in the day. That's what you look like when you face this team. Yeah. It's just a pretty, uh, as a fan of the team, it's a it's just a pretty helpless feeling today because the Bears game was an eye opener that was really really bad. But then after they, they beat a mediocre Falcons team, you go, okay, you got a shot here. Just you know, you should you should beat a one and five team. Although I will admit this privately that when I was nervous the last couple of days because when you really look at the Giants, they had some tough losses. You know what I mean? They're yeah. good teams. They play good teams. So you you know, that's why I, I, I picked was, them. I was scared going into it. I mean, did you it. I picked them because they. They looked to me more impressive. I said this on the radio yesterday. They looked more impressive in a loss to the Bills than the Commanders did in their win against the Falcons. So it's just right now it's pretty depressing because I don't know. You know, we you can you can now officially say and people could have said it two years ago, but whatever. <laughs> this 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 program is, the way it is right now is going nowhere. Did this you, team is going nowhere. Did you guys see any of I'm sure you saw at least some of the Eagles Dolphins game last night. Yes. Did you see what Jalen Carter did to Isaiah Wynn? <laughs> oh, okay. I did saw you the see what he did to him? Yep. He honed him, mm-hmm. knocked him back about six yards, and then the next shot that, that you saw was Isaiah Wynn doubled over and the medical staff attending to him because they I guess he blew up his quad on the play. Mm. Yeah. Like just he couldn't stop Jalen Carter. No, look, the Eagles That's is not what a team. Face you, next week. Yeah, it's not a team you want to face when you can't block the defensive <laughs> yeah. line. It's good. It's it's already. But ugly. I, I just but can't believe when they show uglier. they show the replays of those sacks. How Nick Gates literally can't block anybody. 
No, no. no he's terrible. They, they thought, block anybody. They thought they were upgrading the offensive line, and they they may have, in theory, going from like an F to like a D minus, mm-hmm. maybe. But the sack numbers aren't improving. They've gotten way worse. Well, because Sam Howell has a lot to do with it, and sure. Eric Bieniemy has a lot to do with it. Definitely. But the the offensive line. Is I want to say to Pro Football Focus. One of these analytics companies had the Commanders' offensive line in terms of pass blocking mm-hmm. ranked in the top ten. It's well, not, there's no way on, it's, it's a top ten. It's not pass accurate. blocking. Like, yeah, I don't know what they're no, looking before at. Before yesterday, oh, it's okay. not accurate. I've seen those stats. <laughs> it has it's just to be not flawed. Accurate. Yeah, it has to be a flawed system. Yeah. Yeah. Bad algorithm. And how many how many times did they flag Leno and Wiley? It seemed like every flag was number number seventy one, number yeah, well, seventy two. When you're not good at your job, you have to jump early Man, to try was... to try to offset the oncoming rush. Here's Jonathan Allen in the locker room right after the game. What's the evaluation like after a loss like that? <laughs> they whooped our ass, plain and simple. Got to be better. Anything they did that surprised you guys early on? No, I want to say so. I think it's just a lack of focus on our part, a lack of attention to detail, not starting fast, and creating holes that are too big for us to overcome in the second half. Does it get frustrating when that seems? Yes, it does. I'm f-ing tired of this. I'm tired of this bull. It's been seven f-ing years of the same. I'm tired of this. What can you do now going forward to get it turned around? Get our minds right and get ready to play for Philadelphia. Man, and he's going to be on the show later today. He kept he it every calm Monday. there for the first. 20 seconds, yeah. and then he just flipped a switch, mm-hmm. and you heard the truth. Well, defense is part of it. Now, you can look at it two ways. They only gave up 14 points. I don't care about the points. That doesn't matter. I said it's, you can look at it two ways. It's the big, explosive, yeah. game-changing chunk plays that they continue to give up. We saw it in the Bears game with DJ Moore. We saw it again this weekend. And if I would say if they had faced any top 10 to top 12-ish type quarterback, Yesterday, this defense would have allowed 28 to 30 points. Yeah. They were fa- facing Tyrod Taylor, who had a pretty good game, but he's Tyrod Taylor. Like, well, he's limited. <clears throat> what I was going to say is you, you could look at it one way if you'd be optimistic to say, well, they only gave up 14 points. Yeah, I don't look at it that way. And you could give them some credit that they forced a fumble there because the Giants could have sealed the deal with yeah. just a field goal, and they were able to strip the ball from Saquon Barkley. Yeah. So they made some plays defensively. But on the flip side, I'm not even going to focus on this game. We're seven games in. They are 29th in the league in yards against, and they are 29th in the league in points against. Mm -hmm. They had an opportunity. When I was driving in, I do a show um, called Inside the Betting Lines from MGM National Harbor. When I was driving to MGM National Harbor, I was listening to the show that precedes me, which is Nick Costos, who we've had on Mm -hmm. the show, and he was going through the inactives. And he went through the Giants and Actives. They had a mass unit. All their question marks, especially on the offensive line, Evan Neal, all of their guys. Andrew Thomas. Their center, I forget his name. They were all questionable. They all were out. Mm -hmm. The commanders, and they did have some pass rush. Chase Young had a good game. Montez Sweat had a sack. But they're the team that should have been wreaking havoc. They're the team that should have had like nine or ten sacks. And they just don't get it done. I said this a couple weeks ago. It's all reputation, not results. They're not getting the results. But, and look, but, but yesterday the defense did keep them in the game. That's what I would say. Yesterday did, wasn't a defensive loss. It was an no, offensive loss. No, not fully on the defense, but they've they've got a lot to tidy up. Oh, I know. I agree. They have a lot of things to work on. I mean, you Especially in the second Tyrod area. Taylor go for 280 on you or whatever yeah. you threw for. I, 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 I get that, but. They still kept them in the game. Offensively, they just were so bad, and the defense was out there a ton. I, I can't fault the defense yesterday. No, it's the big it, plays do hurt. It's not on the defense, but again, they you know they are where they are, where in their rankings, and they're yeah. there for a reason. And I do think again, it's going to be my mantra today. They lost this game in the off season with the free agents they signed, with the draft. Uh, and the way they've put together this staff and everything else. And if you're a Commanders mm-hmm. fan, this is kind of this is kind of what you want because, and I understand losing sucks; it's not fun. But you don't want Ron and Jack to give Josh Harris false hope mm-hmm. and keep them around for more of this going forward. He, you want another Ron special. You want a seven and ten, maybe an eight and nine if they're lucky, six and eleven type season. 
so that Harris can just say, this is confirmed what I already knew, and everybody's gone. And that includes Ron, Jack, the enemy, probably Sam Howell, too. You can just start fresh. You're going to just mm-hmm. take the dynamite to it and start completely fresh next season. That might be From true. The looks of it, I, of all of them, I'm, not, I'm still not going to abandon Hal. He's done it. He's ex- <clears throat> he to me has he had a bad game yesterday, but he to me has uh, he showed himself in a much fit, better light than any of those other it's guys. It's hard this to year. judge. He's him. had much better moments. It's hard to judge him because of how poor the offensive line is. Yeah. I'd like to see how he performs. Even just just give him like the 18th best line. Or the 19th best line in, in the mm-hmm. NFL and yeah. see how he performs. I'm not talking about give him the Eagles offensive line. Just give him just give him slightly below average. Mm-hmm. He's got basically the worst offensive line in front of him. Well, I, think and, and Ma- I think McLaren had they gotta help him with they gotta help him with the play calling. They gotta yeah, start McLaurin, from play one, play two, play three. McLaurin was gotta, a ghost in the first half. They gotta he did move nothing the in the first half. Well they had one target. They got to move the pocket. They got to utilize his legs more. How about catch the ball? Quicker developing play. John Dotson could have caught that ball. It was behind him at the end of the game. Catch I think it. he said afterwards he catches that ball nine out of ten times. Yeah. That's why he was sitting there lingering on the sideline after the game because he knows he should have had it's it. Still, but look, on that it's play, still very, it's still a tough catch. How many nice play? And we're going to do our Hal eval next coming up at 645. But shocker, Martindale brought the pressure. Yeah. Howell actually made a nice spin move and evaded it, but he's rolling left. It's hard to make a perfect pass there. But, hey, catch the ball. Yeah, I mean, the game's on the line. Especially because he's been missing in action all season. We yeah. talked about it all week. This Where's Joe on Dotson this is, been? Yeah, I think it's official. I think you could say it. Sophomore slump for Dotson. It's a thing. Yeah. It's a thing. And it's frustrating. It's a sophomore slump because I, I expected him to be big. I didn't see it coming. I, th- I thought he was going to have – a really impressive second year with the enemy. Oh, the enemy of the mastermind calling the plays. Should I offer you buyouts on all your bets, all your over bets? Well, I, Gibby. I mean, the, the Gibby <laughs> Dotson. Bet, the Gibby bet. Unless they just say, well, Brian Robinson, you suck. Rudy Feature Gibson. Moore. Hey, and like, remember, nah, I just don't see that. Remember in that game when Washington's only touchdown was scored after the fumbled punt. Right. Yeah, it's a 21 yard drive. It's a 21 yard drive. I mean, they easily could have been shut out. How the about the, the Falcons looked. game? If you go back to the Falcons game. Yeah. They had short fields. Yeah, I mean on their touchdowns. Hey, he beat it. They up. didn't have 200 yards against the Falcons. That's why I said going in that I was more impressed by the Giants in a loss against the Bills than Washington in their win against the Falcons. It's not to take away the win, but they didn't even put up 200 yards of offense yeah. against the Falcons. What were we gonna say, Kex? Joey Sly is clearly he's he's way down on the priority list, but. <laughs> Missing a 27-yarder. Did you see what you pointed, Dustin? It Hopkins? was a great block. Okay, I mean, fine, the odds whatever. of that being blocked. Anyway, I'm just pointing out, Dustin Hopkins. You see what he did yesterday? Oh, I know. He hit a 54-yarder, 50, a 54 yarder and a 58-yarder. 58, 58, yeah. And I think he, I think maybe he's got 50-yarder in like five straight games. I believe that's correct. Something like that. But listen, when they cut him, I said at the time that was a bad cut. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That was a bad cut. I mean, can Ron do anything right personnel-wise? Can he, does, no. Does he the answer's no. Right? The answer's as no. As bad as he is as a head coach. He's worse well, as the th- GM. Think about oh, the draft. Oh, think about the draft brutal. and the impacts of this particular draft. Yeah. One guy's been benched. Non-existent. The other one guy, doesn't. he never plays hey, anyway. And then two offensive in. linemen, one Stromberg of them's got terrible. got in yesterday because Sadiq Charles. Because of an injury. Arguably their best offensive lineman went limping off, off to the sideline. Yeah. All right, we're going to be taking calls throughout the show. Let's sneak in some calls here on the MGM National Harbor Lister Lines. Fans can weigh in on All the right. three and four Washington Commanders who have lost four of their last five games. Let's go to Walter in DC. All right, you know what? Just can you figure that out. I, <laughs> I haven't heard from Walter in a while. If that's I, the old Walter. I think Walter. it's a different one, I think. Let's go to Brian, because that guy was driving. <laughs> Brian, what's up? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to say I'm 49. I haven't missed a game in over 40 years. Mm-hmm. And after yesterday, and it's been building up for the last who knows how many years, after watching that game, it's hard to even want to watch them anymore. I mean, it's just ridiculous. The offensive line is just – I can't believe how bad they are. I mean, Sam Howell, you can't even really tell what type of quarterback he is because as soon as he, he gets the, uh, the snap, there's three people in his face. Mm-hmm. It's yeah, I, just I tend ridiculous. to agree with and you. And Ron Rivera is an idiot. He stands over there like he has no idea what's going on in the game. <laughs> it's just – just horrible. Yeah, we feel your frustration. Frustrating. By yeah. the way, we haven't mentioned 
It should have been worse than 14-7. Absolutely. Thibodeau dropped that's a, yeah, that's a, a pick touchdown. six. A gift. That's, that's a touchdown. That's a gift. How does he drop that ball? Because he's know. a defensive end. When <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. does he ever catch balls? guys have terrible hands. Even though <laughs> they have big, giant hands. Yeah, the Thibodeau drop. Yeah, the punt. They were trying to give the commanders the game. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. you had the Saquon they Barkley thing. Giants. Like, the Giants could have just... Knee, you know, they could they could have taken a knee for three downs yeah. and kicked a field goal to go up by ten. The, I mean, the Giants, only thing they couldn't do was fumble, and that's what Saquon I mean, did. The Commanders lost to a team whose only win prior to yesterday was a miracle comeback against the terrible Arizona Cardinals when they got themselves was it a twenty one nothing hole or twenty one three maybe? Yeah, and they stormed back for a miracle win. That was the only yeah. win they had. That said, cakes, you didn't hear the interview. But we had Paul Dettino on, who's a beat reporter for the Giants. Yeah. And he said, take a look at the schedule. Take a look at the Giants' schedule. Mm-hmm. He said the way that they are playing, he expected a win against the Commanders. Right. And he said, we could win four of the next five. And if you look at the schedule, they might do it. They got a bunch of cupcakes. Though when you're as bad as the Giants, nobody's a cupcake. All right. Let's I go would bet that. against them winning four. <laughs> yeah. I would bet I would. against it, but as I don't he ca- pointed out, I don't even care about that. they have winnable games. So... Even though they were en- entered the game with one win, they've got the Jets next, mm-hmm. winnable. I'm not saying they're going to because Jets have a good defense. They have Vegas, mm-hmm. winnable. They're horrible. All right, they've got Cowboys. That's going to be tough. They got Washington again, <laughs> clearly winnable. And then the Patriots. Now the Patriots look better, but I'm just saying they could they could find themselves back in the I would be the very surprised picture. if they won four out of five. Very surprised. I would bet against that. All right, let's go to Mike in Chesapeake. Mike, what's up, buddy? You're on the junks. Hello, y'all. How you going, man? Hey, Mike. All right. Hey, Lutz, why you steal my thunder, man? They they may not win another game this year, the way I look at it. <laughs> who, is, who can they beat with the Giants? I don't, I don't, I don't understand I it. And it's like the enemy <clears throat> and, 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 and Rivera had no answers at, at all. I mean, when you, when you blitz, when they're blitzing like that, throw behind the blitz. Don't just sit there and let them just – see, I, I knew they were going to lose it this year because when they kept Logan Thomas, I knew we were in trouble right then because the enemy had a good tight end in Kansas City. We don't have no tight end. Well, I think Logan's a good pass catcher. Hey, look, did y'all see how they press covered them all day long? They were yes. right up in, 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 the, in the receiver's face all day because they knew the blitz was going to get there and they had no problem. They, had, they, had, they didn't have to cover nobody because the blitz was getting to the quarterback. I well, mean, the, well it, it, that's what it, Terry was saying after the game. Terry said, "We waited to the set. We waited too late, but because when they right. they got to throw those fades and go routes because that's how you can slow them down." Thank you, Mike. Right. It's been a long time since I've seen a defense just press cover you all the whole game. That, yeah, I know. They said the receiver said time. that's the most press coverage they've seen all season. I mean, yeah. so you know, well, because the defense is making a decision that Washington and their quarterbacks not going to have four seconds. I can huh. have three seconds. Lucky They're going to get two. to the quarterback. Yeah. And I, I mean, we got to stress it over and over again. The team had five sacks going in. Go to Marcus in College Park. Marcus, mm-hmm. what's up? In hey. six games, Jason. And we said that they were going to get more <laughs> than it's what every they average. Right. It's we every week. He has, he's been sacked 40 times. Yeah. Last year, the entire season, Wentz and Heineke sacked, what, 45 times? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's it. I mean, the over/under on sacks for the Eagles this upcoming weekend has to be six and a half. Marcus, Set real quick, <laughs> real quick, Marcus, for the break. Okay, uh, what I was going to say is, you know, Allen's one of the more tenured players with that franchise. He's been there seven years, and in the and so in the past, in this year, okay, before even Halloween, the, he's lost more games than he did in his entire career at Alabama. That's got to really hurt. And then quickly commenting on the way that the commanders ran the clock out at the end of the first half, Claude Monet used to say creativity takes courage. And I saw neither of those elements when uh, uh, Rivera let the clock run out when he could have called timeout. He could have set up the block play. After all, it was special teams that led to the Washington's only touchdown. And instead he let the clock run out. And I'm paraphrasing that. here, but Rivera much. was asked about that after the game, and he basically said they just wanted to get to the right. locker room and make adjustments. No, he, he said want, it would see, he'd seen it. Because he wants Sam to get murdered again yeah. before, right before halftime. No, 